In today's lesson, we are going to look at uh, how to find the domain and range of a function. Uh, we're just going to go over some things that we learned already. Uh, one is that we can have um, simple functions that are uh, described by a single set of points, um, which we call ordered pairs. So we have seen these kinds of functions uh, before where you have ordered pairs. It's very easy to read what the domain and range of these functions are. Um, the domain is the x values, which would be in this case 0, negative 1, and negative 2. And the range would be the y values, which are 1, 0, and negative 1. Okay, so it's very easy to find uh, the domain range of this function. We also looked at finding the domain and range of continuous functions. Like for example, if you had a function like this, g of x is equal to 3x squared plus 5, um, you can tell right away this is a quadratic function. And if I were to draw a rough um, uh, graph of this function, it would look um, something, uh, let's say something like that it would open up. I'm just drawing a rough one. All right, so it opens up and uh, it would, it would uh, be a quadratic function. And the, you know, we could also do a table of values to kind of find out uh, what the, you know, lowest value or what the minimum is for this function. And then we could find out the domain and range. So the domain would be x uh, is any real number, but then the range would have a um, constraint because the graph would only go, um, would have a minimum. And so the y value would not go anywhere below that. So in this case, it would be, um, uh, y is also a real number, but so such that uh, y is greater than or equal to 5 because the minimum value in this case is 5 for the, um, for the, for the, for the, for the y value. All right. I'm just going to give an example of uh, how we would use uh, a number line here to, um, uh, to write the correct set of uh, set builder notation. So I have here a line, if you look over here, a number line, you can see that there is a, I don't know if you, it's very visible here, but you can see that there is another line within this line. It starts at negative 3, and then it goes up to, and stops at 3, okay? But if you notice here, the starting point, which is right here, is a bubble, uh, but it's open, it's an open bubble. So what, what that means is, uh, the representation I want to show on this number line is a value of x that starts at negative 3, does not include negative 3, and goes up all the way to positive 3. How would you represent that using set builder notation? So this is how you would do it. You would say, well, I'm talking about the set of points from here to here, just from here to here. This is the lower limit. This is the upper limit. So and between these two limits, it's every number there on the uh, of x is going to be a real number, but x is um, going to be... Um, greater than negative 3. Sorry, I, I made a mistake here in that this is not the upper limit. It just means that it starts here, does not include negative 3, but goes on to infinity. So it starts at negative 3, does not include it, which is why I wrote x greater than negative 3. I didn't use the equal to sign because negative 3 is not included. All right. Now for this one example here, how would I use a set builder notation? to show a value of x that starts at 2, includes 2, because you can see the bubble here is filled, so it includes the number 2, and goes up to negative infinity. Well, this one I would say x is any real number, so it belongs to a set of real numbers, but x is less than or equal to 2, because every value of x represented here includes 2, and everything less than 2. Um, let's look at this one here. It has a lower and upper limit. So you can see that there's no arrow at either ends. So it starts exactly at negative 1, ends exactly at positive 5, and includes all the values in between. So how would you so show that? You would say x is a real number. So it belongs to a set of real numbers. And it is greater than um, and includes, so equals to negative 1. And it's less than and equal to Five because it and I put the equal to sign because it includes those upper and lower limits because you can see that this is a filled in bubble so those values are also included. This one here would be x is a real number such that x is greater than 
negative 3, but the bubble is open, so it's just greater than negative 3, but less than or equal to 0 because 0 is included. Okay? And here, x is a real number uh, such that it is between, so it's greater than and includes negative 5, but it's less than, but does not include negative 1, so just less than negative 1. So this is, these are just um, examples for you to get comfortable with using a set builder notation to include uh, or represent, let's say, a domain or a range and to include values that are um, in a valid for that particular function or graph and how you would use that language of mathematics to communicate the, um, the values that you know, it, it lies within. So use the, the symbols greater than or less than or the equal to signs to kind of show and communicate those um, valid values. So now let's take an example here. We are given a function and uh, uh, it's just a graph, it's just a bunch of points. The set of points that we have here are uh, negative 3, negative 2, so I'm taking them from the graph. Uh, we have negative 2, negative 1, we have negative 1, 0, we have 0, comma 1. So you can see I'm just taking them all from here. We have 1, comma 2, we have 2, comma 3, and we have 3, comma 4. So these are a set of points on this graph. So it's very easy in this case, you just have an ordered pair of points. The domain will be all the x values, so it'll be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I took all those x values from there, and the range will be all the y values, which is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a continuous uh, function. Um, so you can see it's a quadratic function, graph opens down, and you can see that there is a maximum, so that is the highest the y value will go. It will be 3 or below 3. So how would you represent the domain and range for this function? The domain for any quadratic is easy. It said x can be any number, any number from the real number set, so it can be, because it continues to infinity, x can take on any values from negative to positive infinity. But the range, uh, y is a real number, but it has a restriction in that it will always be less than or equal to 3, okay, because that 3 is the maximum it can go up to. Here we have um, a graph where you have values that go from uh, negative 5, but does not include negative 5, up to positive 5, and then it breaks, and then it doesn't include negative 5, um, and then goes up to a little bit over 10. Okay, let's, let's just make a, a guess that this value where it stops is around 11.25. Um, so when we'd say domain, domain would be that x is a real number uh, such that x um, is greater than or equal to negative 5. Let me just write that clearly. x is a real number such that x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Actually, you don't have an equal to sign because it does not include the negative 5. So just greater than 5 greater than negative 5 and less than or equal to 5. Now, the reason I put less than or equal to 5 is because even it's, it's included here, though it's not included here, but it's still valid. You do consider the 5 that you see over here, all right? And the, um, and, um, you can also, and also say an or because it breaks and then show that break like this by using the word or x is greater than 5, which is the second part here, from here to here, and it's less than or equal to 11.25. So this, this way you can show that the graph actually breaks and then the two breaks are represented uh, this way. All right, And the range is all the valid y values, which are all real numbers, but there's also restriction because if you look here, the y values from here to here are all just the value of 6, right? Somewhere here it's a 6, and then from here to here all the y values are 2. Right, somewhere here, let's say it's all 2. So the y can only be 6 or y can only be 2. So that's how you would represent the domain range for this function. Next, we have a circle. Uh, what would be the domain range? We have seen this kind of a scenario before. Um, so in this case, the domain will be x being any real number uh, such that it is between negative 5 
and positive 5 and the range would be y being a real number and it also goes from uh, negative 5 to positive 5. So let's look at this example here where we have um, two functions and we asked to find the domain and range when you give you the equations of those functions. So this as you can see is um, y equals 1 over um, x plus 2 It's like a reciprocal function. Uh, we can try to make a table of values to kind of see what happens when we uh, give values uh, to x and calculate the y value. So we can just try and see what that looks like for this first one. Um, let's say x was negative 3, I plug that in and I evaluate, I get negative 1 for y. If I put negative 2 here, you know that it becomes 0, so it becomes an indeterminate number. Okay. If I put negative 1, the y value is 1. If I put 0, the y value is 1 half. If I put 1, the y value becomes 1 third. If I put uh, 2, the y value becomes 1 fourth. If I put 3, it becomes 1 fifth. So you can see that as your x values are increasing uh, from negative 3 to positive 3, the y values are, uh, are becoming smaller and smaller. But there is a point here where there is no actual y value. So the reason that happens is because this is a reciprocal function where you have a um, where you have, you know, you have the, the just sort that out, you have a, a value that doesn't make sense here because it's indeterminate and you have asymptotes, right? So this actually is a graph that looks um, like this. You have the x and y axis and you have an axis where x equals negative 2 which is your vertical asymptote and um, you will have a graph that goes like this. So you have two asymptotes here, one is x equals negative 2 and the second asymptote which is a horizontal one is this x-axis which has the equation y equals 0. So in this particular case what would the domain and range be? The domain would be that x is a real number but x can never be equal to negative 2 because at that value um, the y value is indeterminate and the range would be that y is a real number but as you can see here because it has a horizontal asymptote y can never take on a value of 0 so y will never x sorry here it's x not equal to negative 2 and here y is not equal to 0 so whenever you see a uh, reciprocal function like this, uh, you can just look at the denominator and see that what would make that zero. In this case, x equals negative two. So that would be one of what, that would be a restraint or a, you know um, on the um, domain. And uh, for the range, uh, you can see that uh, it, you know from the graph here, it can never it, this 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 graph of this function would always approach zero, I mean, approach the x-axis but never meet it, so the y value will never be equal to zero. Here you have a square root function and uh, in the square root function what we do to find the domain range is we say okay, let's see what the restrictions are and what happens within this uh, square root sign. We know that whatever is within the square root sign cannot be uh, greater than um, or it cannot be less than zero because then it becomes a negative number and you cannot find the square root of a negative number. So what we know about this function is that 3 minus x should be a value that's 0 or over that, right, to make it valid. So now we can solve this inequality. So negative x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And in an inequality, when you um, multiply both sides by negative 1, the inequality flips. So because I want to solve for x here, I'm going to multiply both left and right hand side with negative 1. I get x less than or equal to 3. So that is the um, restriction here is that every value of x on the square root function would be 3 or uh, less than 3. And if we try to make, let's say, a table of values, we can see that, um, let's say, let's give some values for x and y. If x was 3, then this would be 3 minus 3, square root of 3 minus 3 is 0. If x was 2, uh, you would get 1. If x was 1, you would get root 2. And so you can see you can't put any value that is um, greater than 3 because then that would make this 
a negative and you can't square root a negative. So what is the domain and range for this function? The domain is that x is a real number, uh, but x, x is less than or equal to 3. And the range is that y is a real number and y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, because the square root of 3 minus x will always be positive, so y will always be positive, always has to be positive, has to be positive. That is why um, we know that y will be greater than or equal to 0. Another example we can look at is for f of x equals x, minus, x divided by x minus 2, find the range if x has these numbers. So the function we have is f of x equals x divided by x minus 2. Let us find the y values of this function at these values of x. So these are the values. Let's find f of negative 3. Let's find f of negative 1, f of 0, f of 1, and f of 3. Okay. So I'm going to plug that in. I get uh, 3 over 5 here. I get 1 over 3 here. I get 0. Mm, f of 1 is uh, 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. And f of 3 is 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. So the question asks me, find the range. So the range is simply all the numbers I got here by plugging these x values into the function. So the range is 3 over 5, 1 over 3, 0, negative 1, and 3. So these are the values of the range. Okay, these are your homework questions for this section.